Hey there pilots, this is Dauntless Sam, and today we'll be looking at the history of the consolidated PBY Catalina and its flight characteristics in War Thunder. The consolidated PBY Catalina was an American flying boat and later an amphibious aircraft of the 1930s and 1940s produced by Consolidated Aircraft. It was one of the most widely used seaplanes of World War II. Catalinas served in every branch in the United States Armed Forces and in the Air Forces and Navies of many other nations. During World War II, PBYs were used in anti-submarine warfare, patrol bombing, convoy escorts, search and rescue missions, and cargo transport. The PBY was the most numerous aircraft of its kind, and the last active military PBYs were not retired from service until the 1980s. Even today, nearly 80 years after its first flight, the aircraft continues to fly as a water bomber in aerial firefighting operations around the world. The designation PBY was determined in accordance with the United States Navy aircraft design system of 1922, PB representing patrol bomber and Y being the code assigned to consolidated aircraft as its manufacturer. Catalinas built by other manufacturers for the United States Navy were designated according to different manufacturer codes. Thus, Canadian Vickers built examples were designated PBV, Boeing Canada examples PB2B, and Naval Aircraft Factory examples were designated PBN. Canadian examples were named Canso by the Royal Canadian Air Force in accordance with contemporary British naming practice of naming seaplanes after coastal port towns. In this case, the town of Canso in Nova Scotia, while the Royal Air Force used the name Catalina. The United States Army Air Forces, and later the United States Air Force, used the designation OA-10. Navy Catalinas used in the Pacific against the Japanese for night operations were painted black overall, and as a result, were sometimes referred to locally as black cats. The PBY was originally designed to be a patrol bomber, an aircraft with a long operational range intended to locate and attack enemy transport ships at sea in order to disrupt enemy supply lines. With a mind to a potential conflict in the Pacific Ocean, where troops would require resupply over great distances, the United States Navy in the 1930s invested millions of dollars in developing long-range flying boats for this purpose. Flying boats had the advantage of not requiring runways, in effect having an entire ocean available. Several different flying boats were adopted by the Navy, but the PBY was the most widely used and produced. Although slow and ungainly, Catalinas distinguished themselves in World War II. Allied forces used them successfully in a wide variety of roles, of which the aircraft was never intended. They are remembered for the role in rescuing downed airmen, in which they saved the lives of thousands of aircrew downed over water. Catalina airmen called the aircraft the CAT on combat missions and Dumbo in Air Sea Rescue Service. As American dominance in the Pacific Ocean began to face competition from Japan in the 1930s, the United States Navy contracted Consolidated, Martin, and Douglas in October of 1933 to build competing prototypes for a patrol flying boat. Naval doctrine of the 1930s and 1940s used flying boats in a wide variety of roles that today are handled by multiple special purpose aircraft. The U.S. Navy had adopted the Consolidated P-2Y and the Martin P-3M models for this role in 1931 but both aircraft were underpowered and hampered by inadequate range and limited payloads. Consolidated and Douglas both delivered single prototypes of their designs, the XP-3Y-1 and XP-3D-1, respectively. Consolidated's XP-3Y-1 was an evolution of the XP-Y-1 design that had originally competed unsuccessfully for the P-3M contract two years earlier, and of the xp 2Y designed that the Navy had authorized for limited production run. Although the Douglas aircraft was a good design, the Navy opted for Consolidated's because the project cost was only $90,000 per aircraft. Consolidated's XP3Y1 design had a parasol wing with external bracing struts mounted on a pylon over the fuselage. 
Wingtip stabilizing floats were retractable in flight to form streamlined wingtips and had been licensed from the Saunders Row Company. The two-step hull design was similar to that of the P2Y, but the Model 28 had a cantilever cruciform tail unit instead of a strut-based twin tail. Cleaner aerodynamics gave the Model 28 better performance than earlier designs. The prototype was powered by two 825 horsepower Pratt and Whitney R183054 twin wasp radial engines mounted on the wing's leading edges. Armaments comprised four 30 caliber Browning AN-M2 machine guns and up to 2,000 pounds in bombs. The XP3Y1 had its maiden flight on March 28, 1935, after which it was transferred to the United States Navy for service trials. The XP3Y1 was a significant performance improvement over previous patrol flying boats. The Navy requested further development in order to bring the aircraft into the category of patrol bomber, and in October 1935, the prototype was returned to Consolidated for further work, including installation of 900 horsepower R1830 64 engines. For the redesignated XPBY-1, Consolidated introduced redesigned vertical tail surfaces which resolved a problem with the tail becoming submerged on takeoff, which had made takeoff impossible under some conditions. The XPBY-1 had its maiden flight on May 19, 1936, during which a record non-stop distance flight of 3,443 miles was achieved. The XPBY-1 was delivered to VP-11F in October 1936. The second squadron to be equipped was the VP-12, which received the first of its aircraft in early 1937. The second production order was placed on July 25, 1936. Over the next three years, the design was gradually developed further, and successive models were introduced. The aircraft eventually bore the name Catalina after Catalina Island. The name was coined in November 1941 as Great Britain ordered their first 30 aircraft. Around 3,300 aircraft were built, and these operated in nearly all operational theaters of World War II. The Catalina served with distinction and played a prominent and invaluable role against the Japanese. This was especially true during the first year of the War in the Pacific, because the PBY and the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress were the only aircraft available with the range to be effective in the Pacific. Catalinas were most extensively used as anti-submarine warfare aircraft in both the Atlantic and Pacific theaters of World War II, and were also used in the Indian Ocean. Their duties included escorting convoys to Murmansk. By 1943, U-boats were well-armed with anti-aircraft guns, and two Victoria Crosses were won by Catalina pilots pressing home their attacks on U-boats in the face of heavy fire. In their role as patrol aircraft, Catalinas participated in some of the most notable naval engagements of World War II. The aircraft's parasol wing and large waist blisters provided excellent visibility, and combined with its long-range endurance, made it well-suited for the task. An RAF Coastal Command Catalina located the Bismarck, which was attempting to evade Royal Navy forces. This sighting eventually led to the destruction of the German battleship. A flight of Catalinas spotted the Japanese fleet approaching Midway Island, beginning the Battle of Midway. A Royal Canadian Air Force Canso flown by Squadron Leader L.J. Birchall foiled Japanese plans to destroy the Royal Navy's Indian fleet on April 4, 1942, when it detected the Japanese carrier fleet approaching Sri Lanka. Several squadrons of PBY-5As and 6As in the Pacific Theater were specifically modified to operate as night raiders. Outfitted with state-of-the-art magnetic anomaly detectors and painted flat black, these United States Navy Black Cats attacked Japanese supply convoys at night. Catalinas were surprisingly successful, and from August 1943 to January 1944, Black Cats sank 112,700 tons of merchant shipping, damaged 47,000 tons, and damaged 10 Japanese warships. The Royal Australian Air Force also operated Canalinas as night raiders. 
with four squadrons laying mines from April 23, 1943 until July 1945 in the southwest Pacific deep in Japanese-held waters, bottling up ports and shipping routes, and forcing ships into deeper waters to become targets for U.S. submarines. In late 1944, their mining missions sometimes exceeded 20 hours in duration, and were carried out from as low as 200 feet in the dark. Catalinas were employed by every branch of the United States military as rescue aircraft. A PBY piloted by Adrian Marks rescued 56 sailors on high seas from the heavy cruiser Indianapolis after the ship was sunk during World War II. When there is no more room inside, the crew tied sailors to the wings. Catalinas continued to function in this capacity for decades after the end of the war. Catalinas were also used for commercial air travel. The longest commercial flight, in terms of time of loft, ever made in aviation history was flown weekly from June 29, 1943 to July 1945 over the Indian Ocean. It was offered non-stop service between Perth and Colombo, a distance of 3,592 nautical miles. As the Catalina typically cruised at 110 knots, this took from 28 to 32 hours, and was called the Flight of the Double Sunrise, since the passengers saw two sunrises during their non-stop journey. The flight was made in radio silence because of the possibility of Japanese attack and had a maximum payload of 1,000 pounds, or three passengers plus 143 pounds of military or diplomatic mail. An Australian PBY made the first trans-Pacific flight across the South Pacific between Australia and Chile in 1951 by Sir Gordon Taylor, making numerous stops at islands along the way for refueling, meals, and overnight sleep of its crew. With the end of the war, all of the flying boat versions of the Catalina were quickly retired from the U.S. Navy, but the amphibious versions remained in service for some years. The last Catalina in U.S. service was a PBY-6A operating with a Naval Reserve Squadron, which was retired from use on January 3, 1957. The Catalina subsequently equipped the world's smaller armed services into the late 1960s in fairly substantial numbers. The United States Air Force's Strategic Air Command used Catalinas in service as scout aircraft from 1946 through 1947. The Brazilian Air Force flew Catalinas in naval air patrol missions against German submarines starting in 1943. The flying boats also carried out air mail deliveries. In 1948, a transport squadron was formed and equipped with PBY-5As converted to the role of amphibious transports. In War Thunder, there are two variants of the PBY-5 Catalina, the PBY-5 and the PBY-5A. The PBY-5 has a maximum speed of 292 kilometers an hour, a turn time of 34.1 seconds, and a rate of climb of 3.4 meters per second. The PBY-A has a maximum speed of 292 kilometers an hour, a turn time of 34.1 seconds, and a rate of climb of 3.6 meters per second. It is also equipped with landing gear. Both variants have a frontal 30 caliber Browning machine gun with 1,000 rounds, a ventral 50 caliber machine gun with 1,300 rounds, and two waist 50 caliber gunners with 1,300 rounds. Both can also be loaded with either two Mark 13 1,005 kilogram torpedoes, 16 100 pound bombs, four 500-pound bombs, or four 1,000-pound bombs. The PBY is very durable for its rank, but it's also very slow. Enemy aircraft will park behind you and unload all of their ammunition into you. Also, ground-based anti-aircraft fire is especially dangerous to the Catalina. The aircraft's slow speed makes it a very easy target. The PBY does not climb very well, so any altitude you have is precious. I hope that this information has proved helpful. If you liked the video, please do like the video. If you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and if you think anyone else would be interested in this video, don't be afraid to share it. This is Dauntless Sam. 
Thanks for watching.